Many thanks for joining me on Business Live. Now, the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, SNIT, has announced an increase in pension payments benefits by at least 6.6% for the year 2020. Contributors are expected to get an additional 38 CDs, 30 pesos as payment benefits. Director General of the Trust, Dr. John Ufuritinkwai, announced this today in Accra as part of the review in pension indexation. Based on this review, anyone earning below 300 CDs would be increased by or up by 300 CDs. About 70% of persons on the scheme would have their payments go up by as much as 11%. First of all, the law asks us to do that uh, every year. The point is that, you see, people on pension are on fixed income. And uh, they, because uh, normally there is inflation, uh, which is uh, higher than, which is positive, what that means is that if the monies are not increased, then the purchasing power gets eroded. So you want to make sure that the people on pension, uh, at least their purchasing power is maintained. So the law enjoins us to index pensions every year. And so that's why uh, every January, uh, SNET gets together and um, consider um, things such as uh, what has been the price inflation, the CPI, I mean, the, 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 a basket of goods. If, uh, if a pensioner is bas uh, buying a, a basket of goods this year, is he going to be able to buy the same basket of goods the next year? So we, we, you know, we take that into account. Then we take into account also um, the cost. Uh, I mean, it is always going to be, you know, theoretically, you can increase pensions, let's say, by 100%, right? Uh, and that takes care of uh, preserving uh, people's purchasing power and even enhancing the purchasing power. Mm -hmm. But the question is, can you sustain that? Mm -hmm. So we look at uh, sustainability, uh, long-term sustainability. And then uh, also very important is your ability to pay. Mm -hmm. Because the pensions are such that, you know, it's not something that you can defer. Mm -hmm. When the month comes and the time comes, they have to see the money. Mm -hmm. So you have to have enough liquid assets to be able to draw on to pay when they come to. Coming to more details on that, but what I was also want to ask you that in, they've been in, on our part in trying to understand this whole thing, it looks like there's some ambiguity on it. Help me out as on what has happened right now and how this increment is going to affect me from a pensioner today. Let's talk about 6.6%, let's talk about 11%. Breaking it down for me, what has happened okay. and how would the payment be affected? Right. Okay. So, so the overall indexation rate is 11%. Mm. Uh, what that means is that if we take the whole pot on a total pension bill and you increase it by 11%, that gives you a certain amount of money. That amount of money is about 240 million Ghana cities for the year 2020. Now, uh, and that represents 11% uplift uh, from the pot from last year uh, to this year. Now, that 11% is redistributed, right? Because there is, um, uh, in, in, if you look at the distribution of our pensioners, uh, it is very bottom heavy. Uh, a lot of people are on the low side uh, of the scale, uh, the low earning scale. And then with a few, you know, people earning very high. I have, there are people who are earning 20,000 Ghana cities a month, 40,000 Ghana cities, 50,000 Ghana cities. And then there is a, a, a lot who are earning, you know, 300, 400, 500 Ghana cities, right? And, and that's, the, that's the majority on the low end. A sales and marketing manager of Royal Cozy Hills Hotel, Nicholas Sunsuma, has, has stated plans to have a safari at the hotel will not only increase the profit margins, but also open up the Drapa municipality to potential investors. He said the safari, which is almost complete, would have several animal species which cannot be found anywhere in the West African sub-region. Nicholas Nsuma made the statement at the Drapa when the hotel was opened to the public ahead of its official opening. Rafiq Salam reports. The Royal Cozy Hills Hotel, or better known as Jiruba Dubai, arguably has become the number one destination for holiday revelers in the northern gulf of the country. For the second year running, a new year day, it was full to the rafters. People from all walks of lives 
including the young and old, throng there to mark the event. We are here with the family to say thank you to the Lord for keeping us throughout 2019 and also reconnect with friends. And uh, in Upper West, this is about the best place we can come and reconnect. So it's been very nice, very splendid, and I invite everybody to find a space to come to Japan, Dubai. Uh, the place is cool. The place is cool and nice place. I like the place. It's one of a kind in the northern part of Ghana. Yeah, we've not seen this one here before. Last year, at the same time, I came with the kids to enjoy their New Year festivities. They enjoyed it, and uh, they gave me pressure to bring them back, and I couldn't resist bringing them back. Apart from coming around with their families to have fun, there's still another unique feature which made the revelers glued to their seats, punctuated with nodding of their heads and shaking of their feet. Music produced in the region are equal match with traditional dance. That's something that we want to showcase to the world to know that, yes, Jirafa is really the heart of the region. It is the heart of the region. And our son and our brother, our father, has made us so proud that we can knock our chest anywhere we find ourselves and let society know that, yes, we are out and Jirafa will always be out. Now you see that when they were doing the cultural display, everybody paid so much attention to it. So it's been very good to blend the foreign and local things together. Many of the revelers have made a pledge to be back any time they have the time to spare. However, they wish that the safari should be finished quickest to satisfy their morbid curiosity. Sales and marketing officer of Royal Cozy Hills Hotel, Nicholas Sunsuma, was impressed with the attendance. The safari, we are almost done. I can tell you as we speak, we have some few uh, species of animals. And then the dump is ready. We have a beautiful summer uh, house inside the dump. Then we have the speedboat along the, the dump. So this is the first time in this country you, you have a, a summer house inside the dump. Then while you enjoy yourself, people are cruising with the speedboat, and then the wildlife, the elephants, the giraffe, the zebras, the, the hyenas, let me talk of them, many of them. There are some of the uh, animals we are bringing to this place where you cannot even find them in, uh, in West Africa. You know, we have to go to East Africa, South Africa, and other places to bring them. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam, Jiruba. And back here in Accra, the Institute of Energy Security, IEA, says it foresees prices of fuel on the local market potentially increasing marginally despite the cities recording some marginal gains against the US dollar over the period leading to the first pricing window of January. However, the IEA says the increase could be averted or its impact minimized if the National Petroleum Authority, MPA, applies the price stabilization and recovery levy. Executive Director of the IES, Pa Kwisi Anamuasechi, earlier spoke on the marketplace. The market force that dictates what price should be, although levies and uh, other taxes from government could also change the direction of the fuel price. And so we look at these variables and uh, basically we look at the world oil market prices that will influence the local market. We also look at the exchange rate and uh, between the city and the dollar. And so over the last few weeks, what we realized is that the crude oil brand has shot up by about 5%. Uh, same with uh, petrol and diesel on the world market. According to plus analysis, mm. uh, gasoline has gone up by about 5.5%, whereas um, diesel is going to buy close to 4.95%. And so all this fuel into our own fuel price, local fuel price. The good news is that the city appreciated uh, against the US dollar marginally do, but however, it won't have much effect positively on fuel price. But the international price that has shot up are the ones that are going to influence the price of fuel. And by own computation, we'll we find between 1.5 and 1.6% uh, increment. 
Uh, the decision by OPEC has influenced uh, the price of crude on the world market. Uh, if they decide to cut uh, down on production, they literally affect the supply of fuel on the market. And as market forces uh, economic take, where the uh, supply is in short, of course, it will affect prices uh, to go up in that tandem. And so with the decision by OPEC that has moved, however, the U.S. also released some amount of fuel from its own strategic source of uh, the crude onto the market, which has something at the price uh, or the rise over the last four days. And so it is the same between the, the $60 mark uh, when it comes to the PTI, the West Desert Intermediate One, but the brand is still around 55. We hope it will not go up because other productions are going on. And uh, if you look at the character of this OPEC member, at the point, they are not so disciplined. They will begin to produce even uh, beyond what they have uh, agreed in principle to do. Mm. And so this, this was how it happened for the last two weeks. Let's move towards the upstream sector of the industry. The executive vice president and managing director of Talo Oil, Kwekwe Wipi, says he's not worried about being affected by a planned managerial restructuring in the coming months. Talo recently asked its group chief executive and director of oil exploration to step aside due to challenging performance of his operations in Ghana. But speaking to Joy Business, Mr. Wipi says he's focused on turning around the fortunes of Ghana's operations. May those forecast projections on the back of a very successful drilling program a year ago as we continue to increase production and you know the natural instinct of uh, most organizations is that as we increase we can do more as we increase we can do more i think what this year has forced the company to do is basically to stop take a deep breath and reassess and you know that assumption of just continued upward progress may not have been the right one and actually we needed to take better account of the risks that we actually had producing oil and factor them in better than we did so we've really spent the last few months doing that exercise where we say now you know are we taking proper account of those risks are we factoring them in properly rather than just saying everything will just continue to improve 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 so i would say that it's not just a tweak um, there are substantial reductions in our production guidance. Uh, there are several thousand dollar, uh, barrels a day less. Um, but equally, it's not as if all of a sudden the production will go from 100 to zero in the next five years. What we've seen is that we can maintain production on a stable basis for the long term. So, last but one question. Do you think that the, the problems with looking at what has happened with the oil area and the desperate measures that you have to take to deal with it. Do you think that for once and for all, this flaring issue and gas you have to be dealt with going forward and therefore if you have to put pressure on government or even if you have to do your own vessel to take this gas, it has to be done now? I, I think you are definitely onto something when you say the gas reinjection we have to deal with it because we have been re-injecting uh, from the beginning for a number of years and really I think our message to government is we've got to find a complete solution where we stop re-injecting. Uh, as I said, um, we are not flaring at this time but we are re-injecting so definitely agree we need to find a solution for that and, and I'm, I'm definitely hopeful that we'll find it. So the final question, I mean I was surprised, just like what I asked you about the Mangos, McDane, these are individuals who helped Talu in the troubled times. Looking at what has happened and even looking forward to the plan review of your operations, do you look at your back and so that I'm my position safe? <laughs> when, a, when a board decides to, uh, you know, when the CEO resigns, I mean, you know, no, nobody's job is safe, quote unquote. I think all we need to do is do our jobs the best we can. Um, you know, no, no, no individual, no organization is perfect. I think very much the exercise is looking forward. How do we look forward and make sure that, you know, the, the, let's say the mistakes of the past are not made. 
we, we can't spend our time looking backwards. So I, you know, I think Paul McDade and Angus McCoss are very highly regarded, very capable individuals. Um, you know, they made their decisions because they felt perhaps they needed to move on. But really, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that we can look forward with the resources. Meanwhile, oil firm Springfield is denying reports it is cooking up numbers of its oil deposits to boost the company's value. There have been some claims Springfield is falsifying figures with regards to the volumes of crude discovered last year. These volumes have, however, been doubted by some industry players who are describing the figures as concocted. But CEO of the company, Kevin Autry, says this is not accurate. Um, this, these works, you know, have been done by blue chip companies such as Baker Hughes, GE, Halliburton, Slumberger, and the likes. So this is not something that we Springfield are sitting in our office and we're just coming up with numbers. That's not how it works. They are um, companies that do the work, and um, they are gauges, they are laws, they are stuff which tells you. So you cannot make up these numbers. You can't just sit in your house and make up these numbers. The technical team work with these reputable companies. Um, you have to understand that integrity is everything in our line of business. So you just don't sit up and just come up with these numbers. Uh, I think what you need to understand is that there were some existing discoveries on our block when we um, were awarded. And what we've done has basically increased our you know, proven uh, volumes or our discoveries to um, you know, a little over 1.5 billion. And we have added additional gas of um, 7 a, a BCF. Um, so what the tools that are being used by these big multinationals, the same companies that work for Exxon, um, same companies do the work for Chevron, Talo, and everyone else. So the same way that is being measured for those companies is the same way that is being measured for us. So you don't necessarily um, need to drill 100 wells to prove. I mean, when you drill, it is what it is. It tells you what is there. You know, it tells you the reservoir. It tells you out of the reservoir how much of that is oil bearing, and out of that, which is the net pay. So it's a whole process, a whole you know very proven and tested process, and that's how they come up with the numbers. So Springfield and GMPC don't sit in our room and just you know come up with the numbers. So what I can tell you is that Springfield works with integrity. We work with blue chip companies. We gain nothing. We are not a listed company. We don't need to say anything. Um, just that, you know, uh, our petroleum agreement says that we need to let everyone knows what we have. But what people, maybe what, what, what you need to understand is that, you know, there's a saying um, in our culture whereby, you know, the truth, you know, the truth will always come out, whatever it is. And we have nothing, there's nothing sp special about um, um, our, our volumes. I mean, yes, we've done very well, but like I said, collectively, if you put all what we have together, it's when you get over 1.5 billion. So there's Udum, there's Banda, there's what we just drilled, Afina, and there's Beach. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's, it's not it's not something that's not not been done before. It's that just having been done before by um, an African um, um, in deep water. That's that's all it is. Now Kevin Notri has also been speaking about the future of Springfield uh, of the later, after the latest discovery. I think that. Um, uh, Springfield is looking forward to how we can uh, actually bring um, this field into production um, one way or the other. Um, because at the end of the day, we can add a lot of value to the average Ghanaian. I mean, we have, we've had um, co community investment projects way before we started drilling, way before we even set up, way before we even got the oil block. But this will enable us to touch more lives, you know, as, as, as a company. And I believe that it will also be enable um, us to, um, the government to get more revenues for its social intervention projects and for its infrastructure developments. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are really looking forward to, um, you know, getting to the tail end. It's, 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 a lot, it's, it's going to be a, ho a lot of hard work, but that's why we are here. And, you know, we believe, we strongly believe this is is going to inspire Ghanaians and Africans that whatever we put our mind to, we can do it. So that's what we're looking forward to, people that we, the amount of people that we inspire in the years to come. I, I, I would say I'm blessed, um, but what, what we've done is we've used our profits and our, our resources towards this because we believe in, we believe in creating 
you know, um, entities that were at labor. So we believe Ghanaians too can have families. I mean, if you look at Samsung, it's a family business, and it's our, you know, it's our, it's our latest original um, owner. So we believe that we we want to change the narrative and start creating companies such as such as the Samsungs and the rest. So that is what has kept us. That's what keeps us going, and that's what has motivated us to use our profits and stuff and reinvested our money back in Ghana. Away from oil, butchers within the whole municipality have called on government and the local assembly to operationalize the newly built abattoir to ease their challenges at the present location. They lament the lack of space and congestion as a major factors affecting their smooth operations. Fred Duho has more in this report. Usmanu, leader of the meat slaughters at the whole central market, says their current place for slaughtering livestock is highly congested. Uh, this whole slaughterhouse, we normally work here, but our slaughter is too small. We need to move to, our, to the new place. The way we normally slot, the school compound is near to the, the slaughterhouse. When the animal comes, we enter the school compound. So we need quickly the new area to be open for us because the town is now congested. The new abattoir was built some three years ago under the Ghana Urban Management Pilot Project. Unfortunately, the facility has been left to its fate, currently covered by weeds, and has become a safe haven for some reptiles. The air conditioners which were installed have all been left at the mercy of the weather. For now, the butchers say they are able to slaughter a maximum of 10 livestock a day, but under unhygienic conditions, under their present circumstances. They say they can do far better when they relocate to the new facility. Audu Usman called on authorities to endeavor to operationalize the newly built facility to enhance their work. It was started between 2010 to 2012. So the machine was in, even with a vehicle, that to be conveying the meat to the market. But they have blocked those things off. We have of, they say the machine has been transferred to the market. We don't know how far now, where we are. They went to the former DC assembly. He, what we told her, he said they are on it, so they will call up. Now, up to now, none of them are call us. We need their help to open the new areas for us. The municipal chief executive of Ho Assembly, Prosper Bansa, says the facility was built without all equipment to be used, and the assembly is equally worried about its present state. Yes, from checks I've done, uh, we have physical structures there without equipment to be used for processing and this is what we are working feverishly to see what we can do about it. I've been there and I've realized weed and reptiles have taken over the whole place. At least even if there are no equipments in the maintenance should be of interest to the assembly. Yes, we are trying our best. You know, with sanitation, uh, the assembly does not have the, the required staffs. The numbers are not there, and the labor force is not there. So we are trying our best to engage the prisons to go, the prisoners to go there and clear it for us for a few. Fred Duho's report for Joy Business. And it's a wrap on this evening's edition of Business Life with me, Imano Abuaji Iyadi. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. news when you log on to our website, myjoyonline.com slash business. Have a good evening.